Welcome to Bible Nook's worship service. Pastor David Reed has authored numerous books, served as a contributing editor of Dr. Walter Martin's Christian Research Journal, taught at Spurgeon's in London, and pastored Emmanuel Baptist Church in New Bedford, Massachusetts. He now provides these worship services for individuals at home and free to use by small groups and churches. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Christmas is celebrated all over the world as a reminder that you sent your son to save us from our sins and to become the king over all the earth. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share in celebrating this very important event that changed world history. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help us to take our minds off the troubles of this world and focus now on what you've done for us and what you started on that first Christmas day almost 2,000 years ago. We pray your blessing on this service and all who join us. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture reading from John chapter 3 explains why we have Christmas in the first place, why that child was born, why that first Christmas happened, 
2,000 years ago. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading of his word. The earliest manuscript of Adeste Fidelis, Come, Let Us Adore Him, is from the 1600s, and that manuscript bears the name of King John IV of Portugal. Let's listen to Adeste Fidelis in Latin and English.
The story of Christmas begins centuries earlier, before Christ was born. Centuries before Christ was born, Isaiah gave prophecies in the year 700 BC. Isaiah 7:14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Also Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7 say, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, in order to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Old Testament foretells elsewhere that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, the city of King David. John the Baptist was chosen before birth to be the one to introduce Jesus to the Jewish people. And John's coming birth was announced by the angel Gabriel to the elderly priest Zechariah, who would miraculously father John in his old age. But that same angel Gabriel had an even grander announcement to make six months earlier. Luke tells us, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin pledged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. Having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, you highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled at the saying, 
and considered what kind of salutation this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son and will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. There will be no end to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, seeing I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is born from you will be called the Son of God. Such a wonderful message from the mouth of God's angel calls to mind our next beautiful Christmas carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory Wing your flight o'er all the earth Ye who sang creation's story Now proclaim Messiah's birth Come and worship, come and worship Worship Christ the newborn King Shepherds in the field abiding, watching all your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Luke chapter 2 continues. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to enroll themselves, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to David's city, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, to enroll himself with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him as wife, being pregnant. While they were there, the day had come for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for them in the inn. Let's listen as the Center for Christian Music Choir sings, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Come, the Lord of 
of might who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times didst give the law in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny, from death. That same night, while the baby Jesus was still lying in the manger, there was another miraculous visitation by angels, this time to shepherds in the field. Luke's gospel tells us, there were shepherds in the same country staying in the field and keeping watch by night over their flock. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be to all the people. For there is born to you today in David's city a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This is the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Can you imagine that the eternal Son of God would be found in a stable, lying in an animal's feeding trough? When they ran to Bethlehem and found the Christ child in the manger, the amazing scene that the shepherds saw is described in this next Christmas carol, Away in a Manger. Jesus, please. 
Now let's enjoy a medley of Christmas carols by the singing sergeants of the United States Air Force Band. Christ's birth in Bethlehem fulfilled prophecy, prophecy that was known and familiar to the Jews of that time. But pagan Gentiles were also notified of this world-changing event. Matthew's Gospel in chapter 2 tells us, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard it, he was troubled, 
and all Jerusalem with him, gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he asked them where the Christ would be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is written through the prophet, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are in no way least among the princes of Judah, for out of you shall come a governor who will shepherd my people Israel. The visit of the wise men comes to life before our eyes in the familiar carol, We Three Kings. The most wonderful thing about the Christmas story is that it's a true story, a true story with a happy ending. It has a happy ending for the baby in the manger, who is now the almighty king in heaven. And the Christmas story has a happy ending for each of us as we make room for him in our hearts as our Lord and Savior. He blesses us now with his miraculous peace and love and he'll bless us forever with heavenly joy. Let's celebrate his holy birth by singing Silent Night.
Baby Jesus was laid in a manger because there was no room in the inn when Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. There was no room at the inn to receive the Son of God. But the most important message of Christmas, the essential takeaway of the Holy Nativity, is that we can receive Jesus into our hearts. Have you done that? Have you repented of your sins? and invited Jesus into your heart? It's beyond human understanding, but Christ will actually come to live in your heart by his Spirit. Colossians 1.27 calls it, this mystery which is Christ in you. Ephesians 3.17 says that Christ may actually live in your hearts. When you repent of your sins and invite Jesus into your heart, as your Lord and Savior, you are born again as a child of God. It's one thing to know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, but it's another thing for you to be born again. At John 3.3, 3, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. You are born again when you turn away from the sinful ways of this world and turn to Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Then God gives you a miraculous new birth as a newborn child of God. Galatians 4, 6 reminds believers, to prove that you are sons, God has sent into our hearts the spirit of his Son, crying, Abba, Father. You may have been the worst of sinners, but Jesus won't turn you away. At Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, he invites you, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And he promises to accept you. At John six thirty-seven, he says, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. You may have been celebrating Christmas all your life, but have you invited Jesus into your heart? Invite him now and make the lyrics your own true prayer as we sing, Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne. Thou 
Heavenly Father, we pray that the message of Christmas will reach the hearts, the hearts that are open to receive you. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to make these things come to life in our own hearts by your Holy Spirit, as you quicken each one who turns to you with that new birth, putting your Son into their hearts by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you are still doing these miracles just as you did 2,000 years ago and before and after as we read in the Bible. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive today and working miracles in the hearts of all those who turn to you. And we look forward to your coming in victory when your miracles will bring about change throughout the whole world, making everything right and bringing your kingdom to power. We thank you, Lord, for these wonderful things and we pray your blessing on each one who has heard this message and who hears the message of Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, God of hold you with this sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we Our Wednesday evening Bible study and prayer meeting is studying the Bible using the book, Come Follow Jesus, the Real Jesus. It's full of scripture in bold print, presenting the Bible's teachings in simple terms for non-believers and new believers to grasp and for all of us to review. This week, we'll be starting in the chapter titled, What Did Jesus Teach? You can find the book in print on amazon.com, and there's a 
link to find it at BibleNook.com. But there's no need to purchase anything because at BibleNook.com, you can also find the complete book in digital form. You can download it and print it out or use it online for the Bible study. So anytime after 6.45 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, just dial this number, 951-799-9542. That's our conference number, and you'll be connected. Or click the permanent Zoom link that's posted on Facebook, and we all form one group, either on the phone or on Zoom. We can all hear each other and pray together. So join us early if you can and stay on afterwards so we can chat informally. Also, immediately after this service this morning, we'll have opportunity to fellowship. Just call that same conference line number or use our permanent Zoom link posted on Facebook. Please join us if you can for a few minutes after the service. God bless. Keep safe. Merry Christmas.